Good morning. It's a Blue Ranger day because, well, because I felt like it. I was walking this morning and I walked past this, past this lady with her kid. Her kid's maybe five. And she says after I passed, that man was wearing a blue Power Ranger t-shirt. And her kid's just like, what's a blue, what's a Power Ranger? Congratulations, lady. You're old now. But seriously, uh, last week I went to the Critical Media Lab Salon, which was super interesting. Uh, it was a couple of lectures by people who work at the University of Waterloo Critical Media Lab, which is where they mix sort of tech and English literature into really weird and interesting things. They, co they collaborate with a whole bunch of neat groups. And I got to hear some, one of which was by Dr. Colin Ellard. He's a psychologist who looks at urban spaces and how they affect our minds. And he has these great stress maps. They track how people's vitals as they walk through the city and you can see when their stress is high, like when they're about to cross a busy street and when it's low, like when they walk near a park. And it was a, it was a really fantastic talk. I'm, I'm really interested in, in looking at it and how we organize digital spaces too. And he uses a bit of uh, virtual reality with it because now that instead of, the old testing used to be that you would get people to look at two pictures and gauge how they felt based on their vitals and their reports on, on how they feel when they look at those two pictures. But now with virtual reality, you can get people to sort of explore a space. And I wonder how that research relates to the fact that halfway through building anything in Minecraft, I always get really sort of depressed about it, partly because I like to build a lot underground. And I'm like, there's no sunlight, and I haven't been outside for three days, both in real life and in Minecraft. And it probably does. I didn't get a, a chance to ask a question about it. The second talk was by Elise Vist and Emma Vossen, who are PhD students and who are also super cool, uh, about fan works and fidelity. And what kinds of obligations creators have when they when they remake something to stick to the canon when the canon is socially responsible. So the example they used was uh, Peter Jackson's interpretation of Lord of the Rings, which was pretty awesome. I will admit that I still haven't seen the third one, but I mean, it was pretty good. But they pointed out that, I mean, you can change the races or the the uh, genders of the characters without ever altering anything in the story substantially. And moreover, we have an obligation to do so. I mean, Tolkien's work, as great as it is, it has a lot of sexist and racist overtones. And interpreting that forward, we're going to apply a contemporary lens to it. And it's not just that we might as well update it for modern times, but we have an obligation to update it for modern times. I mean, there's nothing really that says that all dwarves are white dudes. And so they took this and ran with it and made Lord of the Rings Lady Hobbits. You, it was this awesome machinima using uh, Lord of the Rings Online where all the hobbits are girls. Gandalf is a woman. Aragorn is a woman. That's as far as they've gotten. Uh, they they spend a ton of time putting it together. I am, of course, going to include some awesome clips, which we will do now. And I will finish with that, and I will see you guys uh, Friday with hopefully some more music, and then next Tuesday where I talk about the Hagee Lecture, and actually maybe show off something that I do at work, which will be weird and fun. All right. Later. <laughs>